What's up, everyone? This is Reverend Danielle Ayers, your host of Fannie Lou's Classroom. I want to invite you to join us every single Thursday, 12 o'clock noon, Central Standard Time. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Like us on Instagram. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch us every single Thursday at Fannie Lou's Classroom, 12 o'clock noon, Central Standard Time. We will discuss some major issues that impact all of us individually, with our families, collectively, and throughout the entire state in the country. So join us and have this conversation with us. Talk back to us in our comment section. We want you to be a part of Fannie Lou's Classroom every Thursday, 12 o'clock noon, Central Standard Time. What's up, Friendship West family? I'm super excited to be here at the Frederick Douglass Haynes III Global Preparatory Academy, or as we call it, HGP. I'm super excited to announce them as our second eye care school. As you know, we launched eye care several years ago in an attempt to not only provide resources and to provide gifts at Christmas time, but to make sure we could support the students, the teachers, the administrators, and their families throughout the entire school year and even over the course of the summer months. So I'm excited that we have Principal Dr. Barksdale with us as well as Dr. Clark. So Dr. Clark, Principal Barksdale, who do we have with us today? Friendship West family, welcome to the Dr. Frederick D. Haynes Global Preparatory Academy here at Paul Quinn College. I am your proud principal, Dr. Christopher Barksdale, and it is an honor and privilege to truly serve as the principal here at Dr. Frederick D. Haynes Global Preparatory Academy. We believe that education is the great equalizer, and if ever there was a time to create a more just and peaceful world, it is now. Some things that we do here at Haynes Global Prep and what makes us unique, we were recently ranked a B-rated campus by the Texas Education Agency. We are also one of Dallas ISD's top 10 middle schools in just one year. We also are teaching international-minded education through our IB program. We want to say thank you uh, to Dr. Haynes, First Lady Haynes, as well as the Friendship West family for adopting our campus and always for your continuous support. Thank you so much. We seek to deliver dynamic learning experiences without limits to generations of leaders with diverse interests and skills. These leaders will be empowered to know themselves, their purpose, and their power to change the world. I can, I will, I must succeed by any means necessary because I am legendary. We empower knowledgeable, inquisitive, and caring young leaders to take an active role in creating a more just and peaceful world through global understanding, ownership, and respect. Thank you, Principal Barstel. Thank you, student ambassadors. We are so excited to be here with our amazing future. Listen, Friendship West, community partnerships are essential for HGP to carry out their mission and vision. And we're excited to add HGP to our I Care initiative. And so listen, we want to support them in every way we can. So what we want you to do, every Sunday, you can meet the Justice Ministry in the North Ex or outside under the awning to drop off donations. We are in need of personal hygiene items, school uniforms, holiday gifts, and so much more. We'll also take financial contributions. You can always make your contribution online, in person, and make sure you select I Care. And listen, we have not forgotten McShann Elementary School, our first school for I Care. We're still supporting McShann Elementary and all the needs that they have. So Friendship West, we thank you for your ongoing continued support. We could not do this without you. And so we know that Dr. Haynes is adamant about education. He's adamant about helping out the community. And we're excited to continue and expand I Care. So we look forward to you continuing to partner with us to make I Care great. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Man, how great it is for us to be able to gather together on a day like today. Can we give a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more joy than that, a little bit more praise than that? 
I mean, we say it's the most wonderful time of year. Can we get a little bit more excited than that? Because we're here, and we're here to worship an amazing God and a phenomenal Savior. We are so glad that you are here with us as we are coming into this last Sunday, last Advent Sunday, uh, which is the last Sunday before Christmas. And what an amazing time to worship with the West. For all of you who are worshiping with us as visitors, we're so glad that you're here, and how we pray that you would let us know that you're here, that you can do that by clicking on, I'm sorry, by uh, calling the number that we'll have up on the screen and just saying, hey, I'm here. I'm a visitor. Throw up something in the chat. Matter of fact, if you're a member, you can go ahead and throw up something in the chat that says, I'm here worshiping at the West. And then, of course, you got to like, share, subscribe. It's a blessing more than you know. And so what we want to do is kick off this worship when we are celebrating a risen Savior, but who was born so that we would be able to be born again. So join me in prayer. God, thank you for the amazing gift of Jesus. In fact, God, we thank you as we just celebrate uh, this whole season, this season of recognizing that in spite of our flaws and our faults and what we haven't done, shoulda, coulda, woulda done, that you love us anyway. In fact, you love us so much that you gave your only begotten son and your son who was born in order to become the one who would be called Wonderful and Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That one is the one that we celebrate as we are going into this season. And so, God, we just thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for that love expression. Thank you so much for that amazing grace. Thank you so much for giving us that kind of joy. In fact, when we think about you already giving us the best gift we could ever have received already, no matter what's under our tree, no matter what's waiting for us, we are able to give you glory and honor and praise. We're able to enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We're able to say we're going to let you magnify the Lord with us because we are giving you glory because you're an amazing God. And so, God, have your way as we worship you, as we lift you up, as we exalt you and magnify you. Be glorified in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. So, look. What we're also doing while we're in this season is we are celebrating that there are some people who have come through this year uh, doing some amazing work. As we celebrate uh, during the course of the year, this season of being able to engage in spiritual formation and self-empowerment, as well as social witness, there are some people who started off last year saying we want to do some work in order to grow ourselves. Y'all shift that for me. Then what would happen is what we see is you, we are going to celebrate those who are graduating with 52 weeks with God. I mean, they were reading from kiver to kiver, from Genesis to Revelation. And so we're so excited about them. Go ahead and shift that for me as we uh, take a look at what was taking place. They were saying that we want to be engaged all the way through the year in some growth and some development. And because of that, man, we're excited about what's going on. Y'all can be seated as we get ready to celebrate them. So here's what we want to do. Uh, shift for me as we are wrapping up uh, this year of 2022. Before we celebrate those of them who have graduated, we got three shout outs for you. Quick, fast and in a hurry. Shift that for me real quick. First of all, those who are part of Sunday school, man, they are going through the Bible, entire Bible every six years as they come together Sunday after Sunday or t Tuesday after Tuesday, Sunday on site, Tuesdays online. And so they are continuing to grow and to be blessed as they come together in that fashion. Shift that for me. You can sign up for Sunday school yourself and we invite you to sign up, check it out, be a part of what's coming up and what's going down in Sunday school. Shift for me. I, I keep saying shift because you were in this uh, season or this month where we're saying we got our shift together. So here we go. 52 weeks with God. I uh, have graduates who graduated in years gone by but they didn't put their Bible down after they graduated. They keep going and they keep growing. Shift for me. Here we go. We got some who have been taken as we've been going through the entire year, looking through the Gospels, and they've gone through some additional study. Shift for me. So you see some of those who were in the Gospel of Matthew. We have some 
who are in the gospel of Mark, but we have folks who are continuing to grow because it's amazing to keep on going and to keep on growing. Shift for me. Now, what we're going to do is let you also know, shout out number three. Here's the last one, is that the awesome thing is, is that there are people who are graduating who are here in the vicinity in Dallas but we got some who are not just here not just part of our membership not just part of what's going on in this state they're all over the map Go ahead, ship for me. We got folks who are all over the place. I mean, y'all can shout that out. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you live. You can grow with Friendship West. Go ahead and ship for me. And so what we want to do is let you know that as you can continue to go through the rest of this year, look forward to next year and what you're looking forward to doing, you can sign up to be a part of Sunday School. You can sign up to be a part of 52 Weeks with God. You can sign up and grow through your year and not just go through your year and watch how God blesses you, heals you, restores you, invigorates you as you make your way through the Word of God. And now what we want to do is to celebrate those who are about to graduate. They're going to be called out by our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We celebrate the fact that you have done something amazing walking through the Word so that God's Word can order your steps. And so we salute those who have read through the whole Bible in 2022. Jacqueline Collins, Jacqueline Collins, Vanessa Graham, please stand, okay? When I call your name, please stand. Vanessa Graham, Shonda Green, Shonda Green, Shonda Green, way to go. And of course, got to give it up for Jerry, 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 Jerry. Where's Jerry? Where is Emerson Lattimore? Emerson Lattimore. Uncle Lim, Uncle Lim, you're the man. Linda McClure, Linda McClure, Walter McClure, Walter McClure, please stand. Linda McClure, Walt, oh, there they are right there in the Zoom Zoom room. I see you, I see you. Janelle Price, Janice Robinson, Janelle Price and Janice Robinson, congratulations. Felicia Scarborough, Scarborough, Felicia Scarborough, and, or is it Felicia Scarborough? I hope I got it right. And tell us, I see you, tell us, tell us Scarborough in the Zoom Zoom room. And of course, we have Bonita Tom, Bonita Thompson, Bonita Thompson, Bonita Thompson, congratulations. And Cordelia, T-U-L-L-O-U-S, Tullis, I hope it is, Cordelia T -T Tullis, Michael Ware, Michael Ware, where's Michael Ware, Michael Ware, God bless you, congratulations, Stephanie Wilborn, Stephanie Wilborn, congratulations, awesomeness, Latricia Wilson, Latricia Wilson, I see you in the Zoom Zoom room, and we've got Burma Wright, Burma Wright, Burma Wright did that, Burma, way to go, Burma, and we got Tara Wright, Tara Wright. There you go, Tara, congratulations. And, and then we have those who not only walked through the word, but they did a course project. They did a course project. We got to give it up to them. These are our summa cum laude graduates. Evelyn Armstrong, Evelyn Armstrong did a character analysis of Job. You bad? Flora Casey, Flora Casey, she did a character analysis of Timothy. Timothy, way to go, Flora Casey. Faith Clark, Faith Clark, where is Faith Clark? Faith Clark did a general project. And Maya Coriel, I hope I said it right, Maya Coriel, Maya Coriel did a character analysis of Hannah. I love it, I love it. And Maria Freeman, or Maria, I'm sorry, Maria Freeman. Maria Freeman did a character analysis of Ruth. I think that's awesome, I think that's awesome. And Dr. Jocelyn Harmon, she did a poster on Luke. You bad, you bad, congratulations. C. 
Sylvia, Sylvia Hatcher did a character analysis of Job. Where are you? Character analysis of Job, okay? Queen Holmes, Queen Holmes, where are you, Queen? Queen, Queen, Queen. Queen Holmes did a character analysis of Ruth. She's bad. And then Dorothy Johnson, Dorothy Johnson. Where is Dorothy Johnson? Did a character analysis of Gideon. I see you, Queen Holmes, in the Zoom Zoom room. All right. Le uh, Leona or Leon Leonia Johnson did a character analysis of Ruth. I love it. Where is she? Because I know. Uh, why are you not over here? All right, congratulations. I'm so proud of you, okay? Miss Linda Johnson, Linda Johnson, Linda Johnson. Way to go, Linda Johnson, congratulations. They said you did a character analysis, but they didn't tell me who you did it of. You did Ruth too? That's what's up, congratulations. Carlos King, come on King. Carlos King, you did that thing. Did a character analysis of Job, I love it. Dorothy King said, I'm the queen. And she did a piece wandering in the wilderness and the exodus. I'm loving it. Nicole Matthews. Nicole, what's up, Nicole? You got soul. Did a character analysis of Paul. Annie Roberts. Annie, Annie, Annie. Annie did a character analysis of who? Say his name. Jesus. You bad, sister. Diane Simmons. Diane Simmons. Where is Diane? Diane. Diane. Oh, I see you. I see you, Diane. There you go in the Zoom Zoom room. Diane, she did a book analysis of Philippians. I want to see some of these things, y'all, when I get through with this program. Debbie, Debbie Souls Jesse. Way to go, Deb. You did that thing. First analysis of various Bible verses. And so we thank God for each and every one of you. May God indeed order your steps in God's Word. God is good. God's word is true. May God's word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Come on, y'all, let's praise God for these amazing disciples of Jesus and his word. So y'all can register now online for next year. The rest of you, you can register online. Those of you who want to do another character analysis, you can register online and get ready for an amazing year. God bless you. God keep you. And now, y'all, we are excited because the Kelly Corral is going to come and bless us with music of the season. Come on, let's be blessed.
shepherd and follow. for our Kelly Corral, the Jewel Kelly Corral. 
They did that. Thank you so much. Y'all blessed us. Y'all blessed us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's go to God. God, we thank you and praise you for the fact that Mary had a baby. Born homeless in a manger because you refused to give up on us. As a matter of fact, you so loved us that you did not send a resolution. You did not organize a committee, but you gave us the very best that you have. And so we thank you for your love, unconditional, unlimited, undying love. We thank you for loving us. We thank you now for your word and for its power, for the fact that in your omniscient, omnicompetence, you know where we are, you see us, you feel us, and you have a word for us. And so I make myself available now to be used by you. Take over my mind and my mouth, stand in my body, speak with my mouth your word, and now bless your word to go forth with such power that no one will leave this encounter with you the same way. In Jesus' name, amen. We are, as you know, going through the Gospel of Luke, and during this trimester, we have looked at the Gospel of Luke, and during this Advent season, we have been lifting up passages in the Gospel of Luke. And I want to, in this, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, lift up Luke chapter 1. And I'm going to read in your hearing verses 78 and 79, but I encourage you during your quiet moments to go back to verse 67, and you will get the full context of this Benedictus by Zechariah. It reads from the New American Standard Bible, because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high will visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text, and in these few moments, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach Christmas music for our night shift. Christmas music for your night shift. Christmas music for your or our night shift. My soul is a sinkhole. This was expressed to me by a brother who was feeling broken. He said, using picturesque yet painful language to describe what was really depression, my soul is a sinkhole. Of course, you know what a sinkhole is. You've seen one, I'm sure, in the news. And he shared with me a particular sinkhole that he had seen on the news in the state of Florida. This sinkhole in a beautiful neighborhood, suddenly the street collapsed. When the street collapsed, my sisters and brothers, cars went into that sinkhole. A home was threatened as, it, as the front lawn also went into the sinkhole. This brother said, lamenting as it were, my soul is a sinkhole. It sounds like one who is in emotional pain. And so let's lift up what is a sinkhole for someone who may not know what it is. A sinkhole occurs whenever there is a drought or a flood that has disrupted the soil beneath the surface. And when the drought or the flood disrupt the soil beneath the surface, before you know it, there is a void and emptiness as, you, as it were. A void, here it is, beneath the surface. This void 
void beneath the surface causes, watch this, a sudden collapse. And the collapse indeed engulfs anything that is around it. I park here parenthetically because it dawned on me that whenever someone says my soul is a sinkhole, when you back up on the one hand, note with me that this sinkhole is something that has been developing beneath the surface. You never know what people are dealing with or what they are going through. As a consequence, be careful about judging people based on what you see on the surface because what you don't know is that beneath the surface there may be what? A developing sinkhole. Why does the sinkhole develop? A sinkhole develops. Please don't miss this because of a drought. A drought simply means that nothing that is happening that should be happening. A drought means that there is emptiness because of the fact that more has gone out than has come in. I, I park here parenthetically because I don't know who you are, but God has me in your Kool-Aid. I'm calling out the flavor. The flavor is, here it is, the flavor is that you keep putting out, but not enough is coming back in. And the more you pour out without being poured back in too, it will eventuate in an emotional drought. I'm still not coming through. My brothers and sisters, a drought can set the stage for a sinkhole, but not just a drought, a flood. A flood can disrupt the soil beneath a sinkhole or beneath the surface. And when the flood disrupts the soil, a flood simply means, watch this, that too much is happening, too much is going on. And if you live long enough, as a matter of fact, I'm talking to somebody right now, and every time you pick up the phone, it seems like it's bad news and every now and then you feel like that meme on social media of that comedian and it basically she's saying this too much anybody ever wanted to say this too much d-i-s-t-e-w-m-u-c-h this too much when you get news on top of news that is negative and bad this too much when life continues to hit you and hurt you with that which is depressing this too much who am I talking to who can testify my soul is a sinkhole because of the flood beneath the surface and now I'm crying out this too much. That brother said to me, my soul is a sinkhole. I've got to hang out right here because I feel that in a real sense, I need to have a conversation with our brothers. Many of us were shocked and heartbroken by the, by the death, the suicide side of that scintillating DJ by the name of Twitch this week. Twitch, watch this, who you would always see with a smile that would light up a room. But what we did not know is that behind that smile was a darkness that he did not let the world in on. I park there one more time because you can't judge brothers by what you see on the outside. Oftentimes we look one way on the outside, but we are suffering from what my girl Terry Williams in her book, Black Pain, it just looks like we're not hurting when she says that black men in a powerful chapter on black men and depression, Terry Williams writes about the fact that black men suffer from an underlying depression. Are y'all getting that? An underlying depression. We don't wear it on the surface, but but what happens, it's something we don't talk about, but we end up acting out. I got to go there because y'all missing this thing. We don't talk about it because according to Williams, there is no vocabulary for vulnerable brothers of color. There is no way that we've been taught to name our pain. But then she unpacks the fact that we live in a world where black men, please don't miss this are socialized to understand to be a man is to be aggressive, assertive,
assertive and ambitious. And when you are aggressive, assertive, and ambitious, it will add up to achievement. But if you are black and male and aggressive, assertive, and ambitious, if you're aggressive and assertive, then black men are labeled angry. Black men are labeled aggressive, and that anger and aggression is weaponized against black men. But not only that, don't you be a black man with ambition, because if you're black, male, and ambitious, then the next thing you know, you were seen as an uppity black man. And so it's almost as if there is a psychic battle going on in the minds of black men because we're trying to be men, and being a man means being aggressive, assertive, and ambitious, but at the same time, there's a nation that tells us if you are black male and act in that fashion, we are going to weaponize it against you, and you'll end up paying a price for that. And so as a consequence, black men end up, please don't miss this, identifying with Paul Lawrence Dunbar, who said, we wear the mask that grins and lies, it hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This, de this debt we pay to human guile, with torn and bleeding hearts we smile, we wear the mask. I hope y'all get that right there, because that's exactly what happens. Oftentimes, black men have been forced to wear a mask. Twitch is saying to us from eternity that that is exactly what I was doing. I was wearing a mask. I could dance and DJ. I had a smile that would light up a room. I could go on social media and make others happy, but beneath all of that was a black man dealing with his own vulnerability. And Jay Barnett is on point when Jay Barnett puts it this way. Black men don't take their lives because they don't want to live, but black men take their lives because they feel they can no longer perform according to the expectations of themselves and of others. And y'all, I want to, and please, sisters, don't judge me, but I got to have a conversation with my brothers today. You, you can listen in on it, and hopefully God will give you a word, but I got to have a convo with my bros because, bros, we're wearing a mask, and oftentimes we come to church, and, and you know what we say in the black church? In the black church, we love to testify. I don't look like what I've been through, and y'all, that's a testimony of triumph. It simply means when you look at me, you don't have a clue that I've been, I've been through hell and high water. You have no idea how much difficulty and danger I've had to overcome. You don't know what my week has been like. Whatever somebody says, you don't know what I don't look like, what I've been through. It means I've been through something bad, but I'm still looking good. Is that not the testimony of we whose skin has been kissed by nature's son? And that is with all the bad we've been through, there's something good about our swag. With all the bad we've been through, there's something about us that is admirable. In spite of our adversity, something about us that is beautiful. In spite of all that tried to break us, something about us that is cool. In spite of chaos and calamity, something about us that is smooth. In spite of our suffering, something about us that is transformative in spite of the terror and the trauma. There's something about us. We don't look like what we've been through, but hold on. I want to add one more piece to that. Sometimes we don't look like what we are going through. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I'm about to do that thing because a whole lot of us are right now experiencing something that is bad, and yet here we are are up in church looking good. We're looking good. I say it one more time. You never know what 
people are dealing with. You never know what somebody is going through. You never know the disappointment that drains them. You never know the hell that is hurting them. You never know the depression that is stalking them. We look one way on the outside, but we're suffering silently on the inside. My soul is a sinkhole. My soul is a sinkhole. And, and somebody's listening to me right now online or are you in the house. And that metaphor is on point. My whole, my soul is a sinkhole. Brothers, what I'm going to try to do right now is name our pain since we have been socialized not to name it. And here's the deal with it's some, not something we talk about that we're going to end up acting out. And you know what happens when we act out? When we act out, we become angry. When we act out, we are insecure. When we act out, we set the stage for unstable, dysfunctional relationships. When we act out, we turn on those who love on us. When we act out instead of hugging others, we believe that they are stabbing us in the back. And so we move through life knowing that others are out to get us because we are acting out that's a whole lot for somebody to bear this too much this too much my soul is a sinkhole if that's you please shout with me because Zachariah in this Benedictus this is the second Christmas song that we find in the gospel according to Luke Mary in the Magnificat she has already sung a song that we see in verses 46 through 55. But now, here we are beginning in verse 67 and Zechariah begins on a note of blessing, benediction, if you please, because this is a Christmas song that is a benediction. It's a blessing. Zechariah says, I've got to interpret now what has gone down with me. I spent so much of my life hoping to have a child not having a child and so my life was characterized by disappointment even though I'm faithfully walking with God doing what God told me to do I'm still living with dark disappointment I park right there because just because you love Jesus it doesn't mean everything's gonna go your way just because you love God it does not mean doors will not slam in your face just because you have have big dreams and you walk by faith, it does not mean that you will not experience a nightmare of disappointment. Y'all, it's a contradiction, but ain't that this thing called life? Life be life in and life be life in hard, one of my members said one Sunday. And when life is life in hard, it, we discovered that suffering reigns on the just and the unjust. And that's what's happening with Zachariah's Zechariah has believed God, has prayed for God, prayed for God to bless them with a child, but the book lets us know, and here's what gets me right here, is that Zechariah gets appointed to offer incense in the temple. It's a high honor, but there he meets an angel. The angel says, Zach, you and the Liz are going to have a child, and Zechariah did not believe. Watch this. You can experience prolonged disappointment that will undermine your belief. You can experience disappointment and God saying no so long that you actually start believing that yes is not a possibility and y'all can sit there and look holy on me all you want to but right now I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm at your spiritual address because you've experienced such a long season of drought, a long season 
reason of nothing happening that you asked God to bless you with, that it has now started to compromise your confidence. It has undermined your faith, and now you really, you are basically going through the motions of faith, going through the motions of worship, going through the motions of believing. But if you're honest with yourself, you don't expect anything to change for the better in your life because you've been disappointed so long. But then Zechariah gets word. You and Liz are going to have a child. Zach is struck silent because he didn't believe. But he goes home and acts like he believes. Okay, okay. Y'all kill me when you're just getting real holy on me. Okay, so he doesn't believe he and Liz can have a baby before the angel speaks. The angel speaks, he doesn't believe. The angel strikes him silent as a sign of what's about to go down. Zach gets home and Zach engages in sign language and Zach says and, and Liz says I like your body language show looks good to me and the next thing you know Elizabeth is knocked up Liz is pregnant the Bible lets us know with Liz being pregnant that Zach and Liz have a baby and when the baby is born Watch what happens. The community gathers because the blessing was not just singular or individual. It was communal. That's why you know it's a Northeast African context because in the African axiology of values, it basically says that it's never about just me. It's never just about my individual accomplishment. It always has everything to do with the communal blessing. I cannot be what I want to be until you are what you ought to be. In a real sense, it's an Ubuntu kind of situation that says I am because we are, we are, therefore I am. And so the community gathers to celebrate this miracle that has taken place. The impossible has jumped off. God has done the unexpected. A surprise has happened that's blown everybody's mind. I'm going to stop right there because every now and then that's just like God to do something you never saw coming, to do something totally unexpected to do something that blows your mind, to do something that shouts shout surprise to everybody who is around you. And before you know it, you just have one answer now under him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything I can ask or imagine. Am I talking that fast where y'all miss your shout? Now under him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above everything you can ask or imagine. That means every now and then God does something you never asked for. Has God ever blessed you and you know good and well you didn't pray for that blessing? Has God done something for you that you never thought about? I'm trying to say God will surprise you. And with that backdrop, Zechariah offers this song, this Christmas song, uh -huh. this Advent song. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to shout, but I'm close. Uh -huh. And in this Advent song, look at Zachariah talking about how God is going to flip things. Uh -huh. Pulls a Stevie Wonder. I love Vincent Hall. Vincent Hall is a great writer. And Vincent every week does a piece in one of our black newspapers and he did a piece a few weeks ago that I talked about this past Wednesday on Stevie Wonder Sunday at Christmas. Uh -huh. Oh, have y'all heard that? Yeah. 
someday at Christmas. Please check it out. It's powerful because according to Vincent Hall, the song was birthed and Stevie sang it toward the end of the 60s. I believe the year was 1967. Don't miss what's going on in 1967. The war in Vietnam is raging like crazy and Stevie has the nerve to sing someday at Christmas men uh, uh, men will no longer be boys playing with uh, weapons like kids play with toys. I like that because don't forget that Stevie is singing in a war-torn nation, a nation, don't miss this, that is an empire all the way across the world engaged in fighting for democracy there while de denying democracy to black folk in this country. And Stevie Wonder says someday at Christmas, it's a Christmas song, it's in the tradition of the Benedictus that is lifted up by my mind, by my man, Zachariah. But Zachariah, at the end of the song, check out the lyrics. The lyrics, I read them to you. He says, because of the great mercy coming from the heart of God, here's the good news. You can shout about God's mercy is going to make sure that in your space of death and darkness, a light is going to shine. The light is going to shine. Don't miss this. It's the sunrise from on high. Don't miss it because sunrises come from a horizon. The sun rises from a horizon, but this sunrise ain't from a horizon. This sunrise is from heaven. This sunrise is on high, and the sunrise from on high breaks into your death space, breaks into your darkness, breaks into your depression, and as a consequence, quench you are now led in a pathway of peace ah. y'all I like this because if your soul is a sinkhole ah. I'm about to shout you the shout is God specializes ah. in a department of internal repairs ah. uh, uh, I'm in the Bible uh, is it 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6? The Bible says that David is under attack. His own people have turned on him, and the book says he was distressed. But at the end of that same verse, here's your shout. Verse 6, at the end of it, it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Okay. Okay. The text says... Everybody turned on him. Uh, He's distressed right. and depressed. Right. But David yeah. encouraged uh, himself yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. One translation says David strengthened himself yeah. in the Lord. I'm preaching at Friendship West. Dr. Dina Anderson's here, so I had to do my homework. And etymolo etymologically, I unpacked the word encouraged. Yeah. The word encourage in Hebrew, Pastor White, it's going to get you. It's also a synonym for repair. Ah. David repaired himself ah. in the Lord. Ah. David recognized that in my internal environment, I need somebody bigger than myself to strengthen me, to repair me. And the good news is God has a department of internal repairs and God will repair you from the inside out. So when your soul is a sinkhole and you're in a bad head space, hear me black man, God is good enough to make sure that you experience internal repairs. I'm almost done. Internal repairs, internal repairs. God will repair you from the inside out. How? God does it. Oh my God. God has a special place in God's heart for those who are hurting in the dark. God has a special place in God's heart for those who are hurting 
in the dark. Did y'all see the text? I didn't make none of that up. I'm going to read it to you so y'all won't think I made this thing up. It's right there in verse 78. Because of the tender mercy of our God, there it is right there, this particular heart of God because of the tender mercy of our God. One translation says that from the very heart of God, from the bowels of God, from the inside of God, God has mercy and God's mercy comes to us because God cares for you. No wonder Peter put it like this, cast your anxieties on God because God cares for you. It's good to know that God cares for you. It's good to know that God cares for me. What does that mercy look like? Let's go back to Lamentations in Lamentations chapter 3. Y'all know the context. The context is all of Jerusalem has been demolished, devastated, and they've been defeated. But the writer of Lamentations comes to chapter 3. After the first two chapters of talking about how bad things look, it's depressing and distressing. But now in chapter 3, around verse 20, he says, because of the mercies of God, we are not consumed. And goes on to say, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Y'all did not shout. I know I talk fast. I'll back it up, slow it down. Because of the mercies of God, we are not consumed. Don't miss it. Everything around them is devastation, devastation feet and demolishment. Everything around them looks bad, but he says because of the mercies of God, we are not consumed. As bad as stuff looks right now, it's God's mercy that has kept us. It's God's mercy that says we're not consumed. And Pastor Magruder, one translation says because of the mercies of God, we were not wiped out. Freddie Haynes remix it. Because of the mercies of God, in spite of all the hell we've been through, in spite of the defeat we've experienced, we're still here. And because we're still here, we're still here because of God's mercy. Y'all, that didn't shout you, but it sure shouts me. And that is, I'm still here, not because I made the best decisions, not because I've always had things go my way. I'm still still here in spite of stuff going wrong, in spite of my heartbreak, I'm still here because of the mercy of Almighty God. God cares about you. God cares about you. Okay, I need some of my old school members to remember this name, Love Henry. Love Henry. Some of y'all been with me for a while. You know the name Love Henry. He was with us on Polk Street and beginning of Keast. Love Henry always. I mean always. He's big, big man. Big, tall, strong. And Love Henry always had a smile. I mean, love was his first name. It wasn't just his proper noun. It was also his verb and his adjective. <laughs> Love Henry got sick, and the sickness took him out. But I won't forget going to see him. I went to see Love Henry in the hospital, and he's sleeping most of the time. And so, 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 I sat there, waited for him to wake up, and then finally I see he's not going to wake up, and so I write a note. Just let them know I had been there. And y'all, as I put the note at the foot of his bed, Love Henry woke up. He said, Pastor, you didn't have to come see me. I know you praying for me. I said, man, you smiling in the hospital? You smiling with all you going through? He said, yeah, Pastor, this hurts right now. He said, just like that, yeah, Pastor, this hurts right now. You see a big smile on my face? Yeah, Pastor. This hurts right now. He said, but you go on, visit some other people, because I'm going to be all right. I'm going to go on to sleep. I said, okay, well, you go to sleep, but can I pray for you? He said, well, 
first I'll pray for you, and then you pray for me. By the time he got through praying for me, I was too, I was too busy crying. And so I said, well, let me just pray for you right quick. Lord, have mercy and bless love Henry. That's all I had left. He said, Pastor, that was the best prayer I've heard. I pr I'm sorry I prayed so long. I said, you are right. You blessed me in more ways than I can tell you. And then Love Henry said, well, you go on just knowing this. He said, I'm about to go to sleep, but, but every time I'm awake, my mind is on Jesus. Knowing when I go to sleep, his mind is on me. And y'all, I think I'll just stop there and give somebody a moment just to think and thank God about the fact that God's mind is on you. Whenever you go to sleep, he that never sleeps nor slumbers is watching over you. God's mind is on you. God cares about you. When your soul is a sinkhole, you need to know God cares about you. When folk walk out on you, that's when God steps in for you because God cares about you. Yes, he cares. I know God cares. God's heart is touched with my grief. When my days are weary and my long nights weary, I know my Savior cares. Black man, I hope you hear me right now. God cares about you. God cares about your situation and you are on the mind of God. Here it is. Text now says that 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 at the darkest of night. Oh my God, this is so good. At the darkest of night is the dawn of a new day where you're too lit to quit. Okay, okay, okay. At the darkest of night, Martin King said, "Only when it's dark enough." Can you see the stars? At the darkest of night is the dawn of a new day. The text talks about a sunrise from on high that will break into a dark place. Now, I did my homework and discovered that Zechariah is basically singing about a real-life situation where pilgrim travelers are making their way to their destination. They find themselves in a valley-like path, and the valley-like path, all of a sudden, the sun has set. The sun has set, and the darkness takes over and they find themselves, watch this, in pitch black darkness and the pitch black darkness has them afraid of predators, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, as well as robbers that may come and get them. They're in a dark place, but here is the text. The text says in the darkest of night, that's when God's sun breaks through and when the sun breaks through, it's the dawn of a brand new day. Come here, my brother. It's the dawn of a brand new day. I got to shout you. You know why? For me, watch night service is the real deal. It's something we got to commemorate and celebrate. I don't care how successful, sophisticated you may be. We owe it to ourselves to have a spirit of Sankofa and look back to remember so we can move forward. Our ancestors, December 31st, uh -huh. 1862, right. gathered in church in Washington, D.C. because they knew January 1st of 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was going to take place and they would be free. So they stayed up that night until midnight when the struck clock midnight. Don't miss it. It meant it was the dawn of a new day. It meant a new day had, had taken place. But wait, it's midnight. Right. 12.01 and still dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But in the midst of the darkness was the dawn of a new day. And I'm trying to let somebody know if you're in a dark place, God is birthing in your life a brand new day. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody needs that word right now. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Okay. Okay. I've held y'all too long. 
Let me quit with this. Text finally says this, and that is, oh my God, this is so good. It's when we are, oh my God, under the pressure of this thing called life that God lights our path with peace. Meaning, hear me well, brothers, God may not take you out of that situation, but God will give you peace in that situation so that situation may come at you but can't get to you because God's peace won't let it get in you. Jesus, hallelujah, it may come to you, but it can't get within you because God's peace is protecting you. I'm in the Bible, be anxious for nothing, but by everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm sorry for holding y'all long, but can, can I tell you this? This, as much as I'd like to say this has been a sermon, it hasn't. It's been a testimony. And, and, and if you're going to judge me, I really don't care. Because you don't know like I know. But the Lord has done for me. And I know it's a stigma for black men to admit certain things. I know it's a stigma for black men to admit they battled with the blues, depression, and stuff like that. We ain't supposed to. And, and, and a pastor? Too bad. I'm going to tell you anyway. Y'all? January, I had COVID. Knocked me down. But the worst part of it for me has been long COVID. Long COVID. Are they still trying to figure this stuff out? Because I was trying to figure out in February, March, why my memory was leaving me. And then I could not get any energy to save my life. And, and these are two things. I'm a man. Two things that I've defined myself by. I told, I told my man Antonio, I'm high energy. Y'all know that I preach high energy. I live high energy. And all of a sudden, every day at two o'clock, I'm zapped. I, can't, I ain't got no energy. At two o'clock? Are you serious, me? Freddie Haynes, no energy? And then, brain fog. Y'all, one, 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 one of my classmates who went through the same thing messed me up but set me free because she said this. She said, she said, Freddie, sometimes it feels like the onset of dementia. I said, well, I'll be... Because that's what I was feeling. I mean, I, mean, I would see people and I didn't know who they were. People I knew, and I, and I, I, I couldn't say their name, and, 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 and brain fog, memory, me? I preach without notes. How am I gonna do what I do, and I can't think, and I ain't got no energy? And then comes April. In April, God went to work on me. God is something else. Yeah. God cares. I promise you God cares. April, we reopened. Right. We had some issues, some challenges, and that kind of sunk me lower. And then, and then I got a call the week we were reopening from one of my professors who was teaching me, watch this, during the intensive, the week I got COVID, Dr. Valerie Bridgman. Valerie Bridgman, during our PhD program, you have an intensive, and then by the end of the semester, all your papers are due. It's the first week in April, and I have not submitted one paper. I missed every deadline because when I sat down to type, I'd get tired. When I would read, I couldn't comprehend what I just read. And so Valerie Bridgman called me and said, I'm calling to check on you. 
And then I told her, I said, listen, I don't think I can do this. I'm getting ready to drop out of the PhD program because I don't have the mental capacity to stay in this program. And that's when Valerie Bridgman started finishing my sentences and telling me, you feel like this, don't you? You feel like that, don't you? And you feel like this. And she's telling me everything I'm going through. And while she's telling me this, she says, I have a friend who's a professor with a PhD. They have dropped out from teaching this semester because of the symptoms that you are going through right now. She said, but I've got to give you this. I have a deadline for handing in grades, and here's what you're going to do. You're going to meet that deadline, or you are going to have to take my class over, and you know how tough this class is. And y'all, I could not believe it. She just told me about my symptoms. Now she's telling me at the same time, I got a homework deadline to get this stuff done. Y'all, I hung up that phone, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. But Sunday came, the first Sunday in in April and y'all we gathered and when we gathered there's nothing like the energy of community there's nothing like the energy of being in the house to all of y'all online listen I love you I miss you I respect the fact that some of you don't feel comfortable coming but I just let you know right now ain't nothing like being in the house ain't nothing like being in the fellowship ain't nothing like the fellowship gathering there's an energy when I would preach to a camera, the camera didn't say amen. But when I preach to y'all, y'all talk back at your boy. Say it, Pastor. Hallelujah. You saying that thing, Pastor. And the more you talk to me, the more God talks to me. And when God talks to me, I get stuff I didn't even get when I was typing out my sermon because there's energy in the fellowship. Yeah. And y'all, that Sunday I got here, preached. After church, I go out. Watch this. I go out to go under the awning and greet y'all. Right. And y'all, this is what happened. As I'm walking through the narthex, this, this child sees me coming from the balcony with her dad. And the child sees me and the child says, Daddy, there's Pastor Haynes. Let's go of her dad's hands runs down the steps and runs down the steps and forgets all protocol because I'm trying to, uh, to do protocol, mass, social distancing. She ain't thinking about protocol and she runs up to me. She puts her, because she's real short, she puts her arms around my legs and she says, Pastor Haynes, I love you. Pastor Haynes, you're good. Pastor Haynes, would you come to my birthday party? You'll be the oldest one there, but I'll be with you and it'll be okay. And y'all, when she did that, something broke in me. When she did that, something lifted in my spirit. When she did that, that child came from her father, put her arms around me, and that child said, Pastor Haynes, I love you. Pastor Haynes, you're good. Pastor Haynes, would you come to my party? You'll be the oldest one there, but it's all right because I'll be with you at the party. Y'all not getting it all. All of a sudden, I started feeling better about myself. All of a sudden, I started getting myself together. I went home that afternoon. I went to work on my schoolwork. Y'all, I got a 95 in Valerie Bridgman's class, but it all began when a child left her father, came where I was, put her arms around me. Pastor Haynes, I love you. Pastor Haynes, you're good. Pastor Haynes, come to my party. You'll be the oldest one there, but that's all right. I'll be with you. I'll do it one more time. My spirit was lifted by the love of a child. My spirit was lifted because a child left her father, wrapped her real round with her arms. A child told me she loved me. A child told me I was good. A child invited me to a party. Y'all not getting it, but 2,000 years ago, a child left his father, came all the way from heaven down. That child embodied the message. God so loved the 
world that he gave his only begotten son. If you just believe, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. That child came all the way from heaven down just to tell you God loves you. God loves you. God puts God's arms around you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. A child loves you. But wait, the child said, Pastor Haynes, you're good. That's what Jesus says to you and me. You're good. Yes, you're good. As bad as life may be, you're still good. Mistakes and failures, flaws and all, you're good. Because God puts goodness on you that wasn't there. It's called mercy. Yeah. But here it is. Now she says, come to my party. And that's what God says. Come to this party. And at this party, we going to dance and sing Christmas music. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. I don't know about you, but I feel like going on. I feel like going on. So trials come on every hand. I feel like going For my brothers, the sunrise from on high is breaking in to your dark situation of death. And I know it can happen. It happened Friday night. Friday night, Deb got a call from one of her friends who's at the, at the game. And her friend said, don't look good for Sock. Sock was losing. And the friend said some stuff about Sock and how they losing. And I felt so bad. And then, and then, because I, I decided I wasn't going to watch nothing, but the news came on. Right. And the news said, The news said that, that champions South Oak Cliff I used my anointed imagination because when I was ready to give up somehow Sock stepped up and they stepped up and made a comeback and brothers, that's my word to you. Don't you give up because the first half didn't go your way. At halftime, we got a coach who makes adjustments. And when the coach makes adjustments, you end up victorious at the end of the game. Even the youth shall faint and get weary. Young men shall fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings and eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. In the end, we win. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh God, we thank you and praise you. 
that depression does not have to have the last word on us. Thank you, God, that, that you, you, you care so much for us because of the mercy that is in your heart. Thank you that you specialize in internal repairs. God, I lift up in prayer. Every brother tuned in, every brother in the house in a bad head space, every brother whose soul is a sinkhole, every brother who is struggling internally. God, in the name of Jesus, the heart fixer and mind regulator, right now, with your peace that passeth all understanding, engage in internal repairs. I pray, oh God, not just for brothers, but for all who are struggling emotionally, who are battling the blues, dealing with depression and discouragement. Oh God, heal. And then God let them know that you have instruments, human instruments in therapists and counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists that you've gifted if they would just open their hearts and speak. So deliver us from stigmas, Deliver us from feeling like we don't want to let people know that we're hurting. Please, God, I pray that you will give us the courage to share what we feel with the right people. In Jesus' name, heal. In Jesus' name, give peace. In Jesus' name, break out with the dawn of a new day even if it's midnight, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray now for those who are lost, who've lost their way, save them. I pray for those, oh God, who do not have a church home and you will them to be a part of this family. Go ahead, have your way, in Jesus' name. Listen, while we still pray, you've come to church today and let's be real, the deal is this, God has spoken to you, and you know you need this Savior. You need this Savior because that's basically who Zachariah's been talking about. He's been talking about our Savior. Our Savior is the dawn, the sunshine from on high. Our Savior is, is that good news that, that, that breaks through our bad situation. Our Savior is a heart fixer and mind regulator. And so if you're here, and you've lost your way. You're here and you're tired of feeling lost. You're here and you're ready to connect with God through Jesus Christ because you're tired of living life disconnected. The best connection you can have is with God. And once you can connect with God, then you can connect with yourself. And once you connect yourself with yourself, you're ready to connect with others. But it starts with connecting with God. So if you're here and you're not saved, you're here. And you know it's time to get your connection with God on. You know it's time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Here's what you do. Wherever you are, balcony, risers, main floor, stand up. Step out of the aisle you're in. Come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're online, dial that number right now, 469-498-0210. We have ministers who will share with you, pray for you. And you today, this day, will pray for you. And before you know it, it's the dawn of a new day. So if you're here and you're not saved, what you're waiting on, stand up, step out, come on down, give your life to Christ. If you're here, you feel you've lost your way and you're ready to come up and give your life to Christ, stand up, step out, come on down. I see you, bro. You know why I'm so glad he came? I'm so glad he came. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You know what's up with that? And that is you're out there and your thing is, I really want to join church. I really want to give my life to Christ, but I don't want to be the first one to move. And God touched him. So now, what you waiting on? You ain't got to be the first.
first one. It's the right thing to do. So here's what you do. Do the right thing. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ and join church. Preacher, here's my deal. I got the first part right, but here's my deal. I feel led to join church today. If that's you, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you as a part of our family. I'd love to be your pastor. So won't you right now stand up, step out, come on down and join church. Preacher, I used to go to church. I stopped going. I know it's time to get back in church. Listen, this is a great season to get back in church. Stand up, step out, come on down, and let's get back in church. Preacher, here's my deal. I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, work here, go to school here. I just ain't got no church home here. Listen, we'd love to have you. I'd love to serve as your pastor, so stand up, step out, come on down, give your life to Christ, join church. Let's do it right now. Listen, preacher, here's my deal. I used to go to church. I got wounded in church. I just don't want to deal with church anymore. I'll come and attend, but I ain't trying to join because I don't want to go through that stuff. I get you. I feel you on that thing because here's the deal. Bless you. I see you. I see you. I see you. My deal is this, pastor. I got wounded in church, and you know what? I understand. I've been wounded in church, too. I see you. I see you. Come on. Look at God. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Somebody, matter of fact, let's all stand. And wherever you are, balcony, riser, main floor, come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless you. you're waiting on, but I do believe God is waiting on you. Listen, today's a mighty good day to give your life to Christ. Today's a great day to join church. If you're online, dial that number, 469-498-0210, or email us, join us at friendshipwest.org. If you're in the house, what better place to be? And what better time to give your life to Christ and join church? Let's end the year on the best note so you can start the year on a better note, all right? So we're going to have the chorale sing it one more time. And when they sing that, that's your cue to come on, step out of that aisle, come on down front, give your life to Christ, and join church. Because y'all, I really love the Lord. Come on, sing it, sing it.
welcome you to our family. We welcome you. We're so excited. Thank you so much. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for these, your children, for blessing them as you have. Now I pray for them that you, oh God, would fill them with your spirit, order their lives in your word, use us as their family to build them up, strengthen their connection with you, and may they, oh God, fill a connection with us. Now bless them as you only you can. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. God bless you. Please go with our ministers who will minister to you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for our new family members one more time. Thank you. All right. You may be seated right quick. We're getting ready to go, but I want to share a few things with you. First, it's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time online and in the house. It's offering time. I need a special favor from you today, okay? The Bible already says bring the whole tithe into God's storehouse. Please do that. Give God that tenth off the top. Please give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Please, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I'm asking you to do that. But I'm also asking you to do a special thing for me because Friendship West, I did some stuff knowing that you would come through and I need you to come through, okay? Uh, we have a sister church in Pretoria, South Africa, Pastor Sakili. And Pastor Sakili uh, sent me a message on, uh, what is it, what's that? And he was asking me, he said, and we had done something for the church earlier in the year. He said, Pastor, we really want to do something uh, for kids here in Pretoria, and we want to give them a special Christmas. And so I'm just asking if Friendship West can help us do that uh, by giving us uh, $2,500. And so uh, I didn't even talk to y'all, but I said, uh, I'm sure. And so, uh, so what we did by faith, we sent him $2,500, okay? Now, I need to raise it, okay? So, uh, so, so please, Friendship West, I, 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 I hope that I've, I, I, we've written a check that I need y'all to cash, okay? So, uh, <laughs> so please, please. And then there's a second piece, second piece, and that is, uh, I have a wonderful staff. My staff is the greatest of all time, and uh, they serve, they minister so wonderfully well. And, and so I really wanted to make sure the staff uh, received a Christmas bonus. And so uh, the staff, uh, this week, we, we wrote checks for them to have a Christmas bonus. And uh, I didn't talk to y'all yet, and so I, I need y'all to make sure when they, when they go to bank tomorrow uh, that everything is good okay so uh, we don't want them to play basketball with the check so so please no we're not that desperate I'm, I mean not that bad off but, I, but we're trying to stay at a certain level and so I'm asking you to please do a little extra for your church a Christmas gift to Jesus as it were do a little extra for your church and then I got one more to ask you uh, last Sunday after church uh, greeting our guests and our members and not one, not two, but three of our members shared with me, uh, they're in a bad way. And uh, I mean, they, they're in a bad way to the point where all three uh, may get, may not, may, may not have a place to stay come Christmas. And they're faithful members of church, but they've had some things happen. Life has happened. Yeah. And, and so what I wanna do today uh, is do a special offering uh, for them. And so I'm going to ask you if it's an envelope, put special. What do they put if it's electronic, Vita? Special offering. Special offering. A tab for special offering, even electronically. Okay, a tab for special offering. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give $200 to it, okay? Uh, no, it's three. So I'm going to give $300 over and above my tithe, $300. And everything we take up is going for these three because I don't want them put out. Uh, I want them to have a place. When, when they sing, I'll be home for Christmas, I want it to be real, okay? So, so please, I'm asking you uh, to give a little extra, and the extra that you give, we're going to give to make sure our peeps are okay, okay? All right, so uh, uh, I didn't feel any clapping, and um, 
So I'm really concerned. So I hope y'all uh, will, 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 will be a blessing. And, and you, you already know you can't be God's giving. No matter how you try, the more you give, the more God gives to you. So please, let's, let's do our best and let's be a blessing. Let me pray for the offering. God, thank you for your generosity towards us. Thank you that this season reminds us afresh that you are a giving God and you've given us your best. May we now do no less and give back to you as we, O oh God, seek to be a blessing. We pray for the gift, but we also pray for the giver. And then we pray, O oh God, for those who shall be the recipients. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let me give you these things, and we're out. Number one, uh, today is the holiday before the holiday. It's September 18th. Where's Sabrina? Sabrina? It's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. Hey, come up here, Sabrina. Come up here. Y'all, this sister right here, we know she can sing. She blesses us so much. And her ministry is such a gift to all of us. And so we just want to say happy birthday. We love you very much. You are absolutely amazing. So now the album is going to be out in 2023. Yes. 2023, she's going to do an album, and we're going to help you and do everything to make sure you get this album out, okay? Because this is the only way I can get her to do it, because we've been talking about this a long time. So now, before God and the witnesses, we're going to have the album out in 2023. You. Sabrina, you go, Sabrina. Happy birthday. And you know I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, okay? All right. All right, so happy birthday to Sabrina. Mark your calendar and plan to attend our sixth annual MLK teaching. Y'all know it's always on and popping. It's going to be on the 14th of January at 10 o'clock a.m. We're going to celebrate the birthday of Dr. King with the Worship Fine Arts, a panel discussion and breakout training sessions, which will include our upcoming Texas legislative agenda. I hear all these people talking about, uh, uh, Minister Dominique, talk about, uh, Texas has more black people than any other state in the country. And we do. But what do we have to show for it? Right, right. Abbott. Right, right. That, that's what we have to show for all the numbers we have. So y'all, we got to come together and forge a coalition of power that reflects the numbers that we have in this state. I mean, Dominique told me that, that the, the, na the national movement for black lives, they overlook Texas most of the time. They just say, Texas, Texas. And we got more black people than any other state. We are gonna start showing it. Okay, we are gonna start showing it. All right. Uh, we're gonna have, a, oh, we're gonna have a special MLK teach-in for pre-K through 11 years old. Since they won't teach it, in school, we're going to teach it right here. So make sure your kids are here. The 14th of January at 10 o'clock. Okay? And then, y'all, oh my God, I am just, I don't even, I don't even know what to do. But uh, Friday, yeah, it was Friday, we had a uh, staff uh, Christmas social. And so afterwards, I'm talking with our pastor of children. And oh my God, she's unpacking. We're just walking in the parking lot. And she's so hyped about the vision. She's talking about what we're going to unveil in 2023 for children. Listen, I wish Albany could be a child again. Because what we're about to do for children at Friendship West, oh my God, this vision is off the chain in Jesus' name. And I, I want to tell them some of it. No, no, no. I'm not going to tell y'all. Yeah, I'm going to tell y'all. So, uh, so here's the deal. One of the things, like, like we're going to have a special designated, decorated area just for children, okay? Special, special curriculum for our children. Oh, my God, it's going to be crazy. And, and then... No, I can't. I'm, I'm not going to tell them that last part because I'm, I'm still wrestling with it, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we collected the envelopes back there, Deb, okay? Yeah, Deb wants to know where we collected the envelopes. That's real funny. She don't know where to do the envelopes, okay? Huh? I really said, um... Yeah, oh 
Oh, yeah. Y'all, listen. Uh, my in Instagram page has been hacked. And uh, so it ain't me. Y'all know me real well. What's up, bro? Right. Y'all know me well. I don't do no uh, money stuff like that. So uh, that ain't me on Instagram. This my people. Some woman from some other place, she done hacked it. And I can't even get it back. And so it's really, I, I mean, I can't access my own Instagram page. And so do not respond to that, okay? Because it's somebody who uh, the devil got. All right, so God bless you. Y'all have an amazing week. We will be here Sunday. Okay. All right, thank you. It's going to be me and the ushers here on uh, next Sunday. And uh, so we're going to be here, and we're going to have a special Christmas production. The pastor's going to preach. So I hope I see some of y'all. At least tune in, okay? The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and give you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Hear me well, my brother. There's Christmas music for your night shift. The night shift ain't going to last always in Jesus' name. fired up that you were here for it you know what would be hot you're checking out at friendship west so that you can like share or subscribe us on social media it helps more than you'll know and also please go to www.friendshipwest.org and find out even more about this powerful christian movement you'll feel all warm inside to see how your prayers your offerings or monetary gifts and your investment of volunteer time can help make a difference with this difference-making ministry. For all who were here as visitors, you can share you were here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. If you're fired up about joining our family of faith, don't fight the spirit. Instead, call now, 469-498-0210 or email join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name your last name and your cell number either way it will be lit to hear from you Friendship West Baptist Church.